Hey guys, Dimitri here. In this video, we're going to cover Drobo's new DAS system, the 5D3. If you constantly have to swap between multiple external drives to access your files, then a DAS system is for you. Having a storage system that allows you to store all your files in one location makes for a much better workflow. If you're in the creative business, you know well enough that tens or even hundreds of gigabytes can be consumed only by one project. For years, I was storing my files in multiple drives, but at some point I wisened up and went the DAS route. Before going into details about the Drobo 5D3, let me explain really quickly what a DAS system is. It's basically an enclosure that has slots for multiple drives and also for combining all of them into one big RAID drive. There are also NAS systems that do the same thing, but the speed is lower because NAS drives are connected to your computer through Ethernet, as opposed to USB or Thunderbolt for DAS systems. There are different levels of RAID depending on the level of protection you need. But the simple thing you need to remember is that you need to mirror your data if you don't want to lose it completely. So RAID 0 means that you will have a really fast array, but at the expense of safety. If one drive fails, you basically lose all data from all drives. That's why RAID 1, RAID 5, and basically anything other than RAID 0 exist. RAID is a topic for a whole other video, but what you need is drive redundancy in case of failure. Once we have RAID set up, the computer will read the drives as one big drive. But why would someone choose Drobo over any other DAS manufacturer? What are the advantages of using a Drobo system? It all boils down to this. If you don't want to deal with the hassle of setting up and maintaining a RAID system, then Drobo is the system for you. Setting up a, a Drobo is as simple as putting the drives in the enclosure and selecting if you want one or two disk redundancy. And that's all there is to it. The whole setup takes probably around a minute or maybe even less. 2 disk redundancy, or otherwise RAID 6, allows for two drives to fail at the same time without you losing any data. Of course, at the expense of reduced storage space. Most importantly though, in case a drive fails, all of your files will still be accessible even while the system rebuilds the failed drives. Another thing you can do with a Drobo is that you can mix and match different branded drives with different sizes without any issues. And on top of that, you can upgrade your RAID system as you go along. So once you start running out of space, you can buy one or more drives and replace the older ones. So you don't have to replace all drives at once. Another good thing is the possibility to use an MSATA drive along with regular hard disks. At the bottom of the enclosure, there's a slot where you can install the MSATA drive. The system will use it to store frequently used files with the fastest possible access. Upgrading also from an older Drobo system is very easy. Before the 5D3, I had the Drobo 5D, and the upgrade was dead simple. I just took the drives out of the old enclosure and put them into the new one. And then I just booted up and that was that. It couldn't be any simpler than that. The 5D3, as the name suggests, can hold up to 5 drives and its size is quite compact. You can easily have it next to your computer without having to take too much space. If you can stand the noise, that is. It's built to be on all the time, but I usually turn it on when I need to store stuff there or if I need to access older files. I like to work in silence, so having to listen to Drobo's fans is not really high on my list. So I usually work with my Amex internal disk, and then when ready, I move everything to the 5D. Access to the drives is really simple. The front part latches magnetically to the enclosure, so if we need access to the drives, we just detach the front part and press on the clasps that take them off. No screws are used to attach them to the enclosure. So you just insert the drive in the enclosure and you're all set. We also have some really good indications in front of the enclosure telling us how much of the disk space uh, remains 
and of course we can control the LEDs. So how bright this should be, whether this should be on or not, etc. In essence, the enclosure is treated like any other external hard drive. So how fast is the 5G3? It depends on the drives you're going to use, but in general it's going to be a little bit faster than a single hard drive. It cannot compete with the speed of SSD drives or even other RAID systems out there. In disk speed test, set at 5GB as Blackmagic suggests, it scores around 200MB per second for write and 230MB per second for read. This is with 5 Western Digital Red drives. These are NASA optimized drives and they're one of the drives recommended by Drobo. By comparison, a single hard drive on an external enclosure could give us read speeds anywhere around 120 to 160 megabytes per second. So it's faster than one disk drive, but it's not by a whole lot. Compared to the Drobo 5D, the performance is not that much faster. So with the exact same drives, the 5D would give us around 170 for write and 200 to 220 for read. The 5D3 would peak higher though, uh, with the speeds going up to 400 megabytes per second for writes, but on average the write speeds are around 200. If you compare the 5D3 with other systems like Promises Pegasus on a similar 5 disk RAID 6 array, Drobo's enclosure lags behind. Pegasus can output almost double the speed. But just because 5D3 is not as fast as other RAID systems, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's fast enough to do almost all tasks. You can easily edit video from it, and not just 2K videos, but also 4K videos as well. I tried uh, 400 megabit uh, 4K video files, and they're editing fine on the Drobo. For other uses like simple file storage, of course it's plenty fast. The Thunderbolt 3 connection definitely feels a little bit overkill though, since it doesn't even come close to saturating the port at all. But the interesting thing is that even though these kind of speeds can be easily achieved through USB-C, since the drive allows us to uh, connect uh, through that, the speed is much lower than Thunderbolt. I don't know what the issue is, but it's something you should keep in mind if you're planning to use the system with USB-C. If that's the case, I would suggest to either upgrade to Thunderbolt 3 or just buy a different DAS system. Overall, I would say the speed is adequate enough. The website might lead you to believe that it's a really fast RAID system, especially when combined with the MSATA drive, but disregard the marketing talk. It's not as fast as other systems, but it definitely does the job. So, now that we know overall how the enclosure behaves, I would like to mention some other things you should uh, be aware of before buying. The first one has to do with the quality of the Drobo's products overall. Even though the build quality seems solid enough and the products work as advertised, the overall level of quality varies from product to product. Not just in hardware, but also in software. For example, more than a decade ago, when Drobo introduced their uh, first enclosures, there were a lot of people reporting hard drive fails, and it seems that Drobo's back then uh, were running the drives uh, hot. It seems now that these drive issues are long gone, but other issues still persist nonetheless. For example, my first experience with Drobo's products was with the first generation of the Drobo 5D. The drive would not always mount, and I would have to unplug it from the computer and plug it again in order for it to show up. I didn't have to do that all the time, but I would say 3 out of 5 times I would have to do this. Drobo support tried to be helpful, but in the end they found no fault with the device. I didn't want to go through the hassle of uh, returning the product and waiting for a new one, so I chose to keep it and go through the trouble of plugging and unplugging whenever it was needed. So for 4 years I've been doing this dance with the Drobo 5D. The drive was also incredibly loud, which was another big annoyance of mine especially when my iMac was completely silent. So a whole computer doing heavy renders for days was perfectly silent, but the enclosure responsible for just writing files and drives was incredibly loud. Even though these problems would be enough for me to switch brands, for some reason I decided to stick with Drobo and bought the 5D3. 
At first when I received it, everything looked fine. It was a little bit faster than a 5D and it was also less noisy. But the honeymoon phase ended quite abruptly. After just a day of use, the power supply completely died on me. After just one day. Support was quick enough in the response, but sending a new power supply took a little bit more than a week. If I didn't have the power supply from the 5D, I wouldn't be able to access my files at all for that week. Thankfully, the new power supply works fine, but it's clear that there are quality issues plaguing Drobo's products. The other thing you need to be aware of is that you should forget about the OS's size info dialogs. Drobo won't report to the OS the actual size of the drive, but the theoretical maximum the enclosure can hold. So if you want to see the actual space available, you need to go into the Drobo app. Which brings us to my other annoyance, which is the Drobo application itself. It follows none of the OS X interface guidelines, and it looks like the application was done from an engineer who has never used OS X. Which is really strange because the only people I've seen with Drobo's are Mac users. I understand that this might be a minor thing for some, but uh, for me there's nothing more annoying than a utility that completely disregards the OS environment it's on. One other thing to take note of is that when using the MSATA drive, the system will need to do quite frequently maintenance work. The way this is done is a little bit unorthodox, so you might turn on the drive, and if optimization needs to be done, the drive will eject itself and it will give you a pop-up informing you about that. So to start the optimizations you need to unplug the Thunderbolt cable, and as Drobo restarts it will perform the optimizations needed. Apart from the very weird way of handling this task, the most annoying thing is the frequency that this needs to be done. At the beginning, I had to do it several times when starting up the drive. Now it's every once in a while. Without the MSATA, I never had to deal with this procedure. So this is something to keep in mind if you want to buy an MSATA drive. To be honest, I haven't really noticed any huge uh, speed improvements, so I will go as far as saying that you don't really need it if you're dealing mostly with uh, big files. And with this I think I covered everything you should know about Drobo 5D3. It's a good enough enclosure and it does what it's supposed to do, but for the kind of money you need to spend, I kind of expect better performance and also really high quality on software and hardware. I will still use it for the next few years, but I think you should be aware of these issues if you intend to buy one. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear anything more about the drive. And that's about it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.